Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. And as you can see, uh, my partner in crime, Art Kirsch, and I are with the fabulous virtual gourmet, John Mariani. John, welcome back. Good to see you again. Always good to be back on. Well, by the way, I apologize for my partner, John, not including you in our criminality. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes John doesn't like to share. But we consider you a partner in, in uh, uh, the crime of people who don't understand what good food is all about. Uh -huh. uh, and, and speaking of criminals, um, I'm, I love Italian food. But I'm like a, a pizzeria guy. Now, in the U.S., pizzerias have everything from from uh, subs to uh, various Italian dishes. And quite frankly, most of them are pretty good. They taste fairly good. But that's not the real Italian experience. Uh, can you help, help a poor Luddite like me understand better what Italian rest, restaurantes and trattorias and things like that are all about? Hmm. I'll try. Victorious. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, l let's start with the pizza. We've talked about pizzas in the past, so we'll quickly go through pizzerias. Pizzerias, pizzerias were created in Naples back in the uh, 19th century, ba ba basically, uh, about in the 1860s, specifically when the pizza margarita was invented. And pizzerias were places that served only pizza. They didn't serve other Italian dishes. And that persisted even into America, where pizzerias really took uh, wind, because they were unknown in the rest of Italy. So uh, if you were to go out for a pizza, you'd go to a pizzeria. You wouldn't go to a trattoria or a ristorante. And that started to change in the second generation of Italian immigrants who were doing so well with their pizzas that they say, why don't we serve a little pasta? Why don't we serve some uh, from some vegetables? Why don't we serve? So that then transforms the pizzeria into a trattoria, a trattoria, okay, which is a homey, casual Italian mm -hmm. eatery, uh, sometimes uh, serving regional Italian food, whereas in America it's almost exclusively, up until the last 20 years, um, southern Italian food, okay. So they started as, they, as these people became, uh, these trattorias became more popular, they started to regard the owners themselves started to regard pizzerias and serving pizzas as not just an adjunct, but something we want to divorce ourselves through. There's pizzerias in this place as large as ours, a trattoria, serving real Italian food. You want a pizza? You want to go for a slice? Go across the street to uh, Joey's. You know, this is my place. So, and then another generation goes by, and the trattoria has become so popular that they expand into a ristorante, which is a fine dining Italian restaurant. And with all the accoutrements of, of, of decor and uh, tuxedo waiters and back in the old days, no more certainly, and a wider, much wider range of uh, dishes and a big wine list very, very often, uh, which a trattoria generally does not have. Maybe they'll have a dozen wines, a score of wines. So uh, those are the distinctions. And But that, over the last 20 years, has become all mixed up because when, and I give a certain jaundice credit to uh, Wolfgang Puck when he started to serve his gourmet pizzas at Spago back in 1980 or so, um, that place became such a big hit and so representative of new California cuisine and artwork and casual chic, whereas, you know, on the first night, like Sidney Poitier and Kirk Douglas show up. Well, he made the pizza in America a gourmet item, not least his uh, so-called Jewish pizza, which was with smoked salmon, sour cream, and uh, caviar on top. So um, that sparked this change of attitude that, well, pizzas, good pizzas could just be another aspect of a trattoria menu. And so now, I mean, these days, forget all Italian restaurants, you can't go to an, an American restaurant that does not serve pizza and probably pasta also. But let's take pizza off the table, pizzerias off the table. 
and talk more about uh, trattorias, not trattorias, but trattorias. Um, trattoria is the equivalent of a French family-owned bistro, which we've spoken about on another show, and many of the things I will say will be similar. Um, if you walk into a trattoria, ma or pa is going to, mama or papa is going to greet you. There's probably a kid waiting tables. Um, and um, either she's back in the in the in the kitchen cooking, and he's up front, or vice versa. And you'll be given a short menu of what's the what is the best that day. Now, if it's springtime, as it is right now, you're going to get um, dishes with basil. You're going to get pesto sauces in in Liguria. If you're going, if you're in Rome, you're going to get abaccio, which is baby spring lamb. Okay, so these things are very important. Then they have the daily specials. And gnocchi is always served on a Monday, and uh, the strozzo preti on a Thursday, and so forth. Friday being meatless would be a zuppa di pesce. You're going to have you're probably an old, you're probably going to have tablecloths, red and white, or blue and white, or green and white check tablecloths. There's the inevitable Chianti bottle with a candle sticking out of it, um, and it's going to be close quarters. Uh, they may or may not take reservation, so you wait and you have a a glass of wine either at the bar or maybe even outside the uh, restaurant standing on line with some beautiful people. And uh, that's basically what a trattoria is. And they're very concerned about their customers. They always want you to try something. And as I say, the specialties in the um, so-called or the old, the ex-former Jewish ghetto uh, in Rome is where you'll have um, Italian food, cucina alla Judea, Jewish cuisine. And the Jews loved artichokes, <clears throat> so they were the ones who came up with frying artichokes really nice and crisp. And that's one of the and artichokes a la Judea is one of those dishes at those kinds of trattorias. Interesting. Uh, John, being a former New Yorker, um, I've spent a lot of time, I don't even know if it's there anymore, I haven't been back uh, to New York in a few years, at the trattoria in the Pan Am building. Do you remember that? Oh, very, very well. And of course, that was not what you're describing. That was really a re an Italian restaurant with the name Trattoria on it. Yes and no. It was, it was not an Italian ristorante insofar as the food being served, and it was very American because the portions were enormous. But they were serving. They were specializing in things like lasagna. They did not serve pizza. Okay, but they were specializing in things like lasagna and manicotti. And what made Trattoria, which was in the Pan Am building, now the Met Life building or something, um, what made it special was it brought in Italian design of the late 1950s and 60s, this dazzling, radiant yellow and reds and oranges, and they put up these great Italian uh, uh, travel posters. Uh, this was at a time, I remember, when everybody was falling in love with Italian movies and Gregory Peck on a Vespa with Audrey Hepburn and in, in Rome and so forth, Rosano Brazzo, Brazzi and so forth. So it was built by Restaurant Associates, which also built the uh, Four Seasons and Fonda del Sol. And they sent their guys over to Italy and said, spend whatever you want, just bring back something really cool. And that was a trattoria, and I adored it. Um, it transmogrified many years later into Naples 45, which was featuring pizza out of these great pizza ovens they had, but also served food. And now, as of the pandemic, it is closed and is never going to reopen, at yeah. least as Naples 45. But I, I thought it was the sexiest place back in the back in the late 1960s. I would uh, I was working, believe it or not, I was teaching for a year up at Catherine Gibbs Secretarial School. I'm wrong to tell you about that sometime. But I would go down <laughs> and sit at the counter there and order the lasagna or uh, yes. the Alfredo, and I'd be in heaven. Yeah, and that was my experience. My mm -hmm. brother and I would meet there, uh, you know, for lunch and stay at, at the counter <laughs> for hours. Uh, but it was it was a kind of a, I know they had banquets and and dining area, but it, it was really for us it was a counter. Uh, experience and it wasn't it didn't seem it certainly wasn't a restaurante it wasn't a uh, fine dining right. um, but it also seemed maybe it was because I wasn't aware of the Italian um, 
style, you know, modern Italian design, but it didn't seem Italian. Uh, a couple of posters on the walls. It mostly seemed like Italian food in an American restaurant. Very true, because the creators, restaurant associates, were um, uh, very adept at uh, riding that line. Exactly what you said. We're real American guys doing, but we really research this food, and this is what a modern Italian restaurant should look like. They also did, remember, Zoom Zoom, which was devoted to German sausages, and Fonda del Sol was Spanish, and right. uh, the Forum of the Twelve Caesars was really kitschy, <clears throat> ancient Roman, where they would serve the champagne in a, uh, a centurion's yeah. uh, silver uh, uh, helmet and had sort of the greatest Caesar salad of them all, and stuff like that. They, they were fun places and designed to be at a... It was also to time to remember that this was when women who would not go out alone to dine in the past uh, were working girls, some of them coming out of Catherine Gibbs Secretarial School, right. and dressed beautifully, and they went out on their own, and uh, it was a wonderful, sexy time to be alive. It was very colorful. Yeah, it's really amazing. So, so uh, by extension, you probably have uh, 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 introduced the world of the modern woman to dining alone, if they felt they could do so. Is that what you, your training was at Catherine Gibbs? Well, the, the reason I was at Catherine Gibbs was uh, I was in graduate school uh, up at Columbia, hmm. under 16th Street, and the Pan Am building was in the Grand Central Terminal. So I take the train in, and I was basically getting a deferment not to go to Vietnam, and that's the only reason. So um, I taught there for two years, I guess, and it's a secretarial school, but I was teaching, um, believe it or not, uh, history and economics, um, because they had a liberal arts program. So it was a lot of fun in so many ways. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know, absolutely amazing that uh, when we speak to John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, we learned all sorts of interesting things like the Catherine Gibbs deferment. Who knew? Catherine Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, has been, this has been fabulous. You know, we, uh, the, probably we uh, talked about French food, uh, Irish pubs, and now uh, Italian food in general in the United States. These are just absolutely fascinating insights into, well, you went down to that local Italian restaurant and but, but here's really what the background of the whole thing was and why the food probably is is uh, 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 so widespread. It's not just pizza. It's not just uh, 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 pasta. It, it's everything, and it's done well, and it's sort of the progression. So uh, these are fascinating, and both uh, I and our audience are just fascinated Thank you. By, by all the kinds of your, your, your obvious uh, uh, knowledge, not just of what tastes good, but what the whole situation of wine and food Texas and its combination and how it's presented. So uh, thank you for that. Context is important. And uh, Neil Simon said it best. He says, there's two laws in the universe. One, the law of gravity. And two, everybody likes Italian food. <laughs> right. John, we'll see, you at, we'll see you at the neighborhood trattoria very Adios. soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.